Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And in this video, we are gonna be working on a fast depleting RBMK reactor designed for a dangerous fuel which is highly enriched plutonium 239. Now, this fuel is pretty important when it comes to plutonium 241 and eventually americium production. That is why we are going to deplete it. When it comes to power production, this reactor can produce roughly 9 to 10 million Hg per second. So, that's not pretty bad considering its size. Now, the design needs to be changed once the fuel has depleted over 30%. So I recommend keeping an eye out on the timestamp section. Without any further ado, let's get straight into it. Setting up the reactor itself is pretty straightforward. Start by placing four ultra dense steam pipes on the ground, leaving a one block gap and connect them in the middle. Now in the four corners, place down your steam connectors and on top of them, place down your water ducts, making sure that you also connect them internally. Now in the middle, place down two moderated fuel rod and on either side, place down four steam channels. Now with four steam channels placed like this, we will divide our reactor into two equal parts. One will be the reflector side and another one will be the absorber side. So on one of the fuel rod, place down three reflectors and on the other fuel rod, place down three absorbers. And with this, you will completely enclose your reactor, preventing any neutrons from escaping. Now to close the reactor from the top, make sure that you place RBMK cover on each and every one of the columns. And then also make sure to set each of the steam channel to ultra dense steam. And with this last one done, our reactor is actually ready. Now we will set up the water supply and the turbines. So for water, you will need one big ash tank with heavy infinite water barrel in it. And make sure to set this tank to input output mode, which is the green mode. A single heavy water tank will make do for this reactor. And now, once the tank is connected, the reactor will fill up with water. We will place down four turbines. So as we are producing ultra dense steam, we will need a total of four. So set the first turbine to ultra dense steam. And now, in order to connect them without placing any ducts, just place down another turbine, touching the first turbine. So this turbine will be set to super dense steam. And let's place the remaining two for dense. So the third turbine here will go for dense steam. And finally, the fourth turbine will be for normal steam. There we go. So now that this is done, make sure to connect all of the turbines with the power cables in order to get the power out. And in order to complete this loop of water, we will place down one cooling tower. A single tower will suffice for this build. So get your low pressure steam pipes from the last turbine and connect it with the cooling tower. And finally connect some water ducts to our main water supply, which is the biggest tank. And with this, a loop is finally complete. Now while we are waiting for the tank to fill up with water, there is one important thing that you need to remember. Make sure that you always remove the fuel from the reactor before closing your vault and logging in again. Otherwise your reactor will simply explode when you join your vault again. So in order to do this, I am going to place down a spent fuel pull drum so that I can always remember to remove my fuel before exiting the vault. And once you have placed your fuel drum, just make sure to place your fuel in it before exiting. Just please do that, otherwise every time you join your world, the reactor will simply explode. And this problem only occurs at high depletion levels. Now that the entire thing is done, our biggest tank is full, let's start fire or let's fire up this reactor. So on the reflector side, we are going to place our high and rich plutonium 239. And on the absorber side, we are going to place our medium enriched plutonium, which is the MEP 239. Once you place this rod, the reaction should start and the turbine should start up in some time. Now as you can see, this reactor is going to run pretty hot. The temperature will go well beyond 2300 degrees Celsius. So yeah, it's a pretty hot running reactor, but you can also see that the depletion rate is pretty fast. So yeah, that's the reason we are making it run so hot. So now that the temperature has went up, it will stabilize at around 2245 degrees Celsius and we will get roughly 9 to 10 million Hg per second. Alright, so to check the power production, here we go. We are getting roughly 9.5 million Hg per second, which is not too bad. So now that we take a look at the reactor, our fuel should be approximately 1% depleted. 
the water levels will or basically they are holding good and they should hold good as the reactor progresses and the fuel depletes so here we have depleted our fuel by one percent already now i'm going to leave this reactor on for one hour and just show you guys some pics of different minutes or basically of different time intervals that i took so you can see for yourself at nine minutes we get roughly five percent depletion at 18 minutes we hit 10 percent depletion and you can see that the reactivity goes up after 30 minutes we hit 15 percent or 16 percent depletion 37 minutes we reach over 20 percent and now the reactivity will go down finally at 45 minutes we hit 23 percent depletion and after one hour if we take a look we hit 30 percent depletion now that you can see the skin temperature has went down drastically like we were running at 2200 degrees celsius and now we are down to 1600 that will reflect in the power production you will get roughly 5 to 6 million hg per second which is well not exactly what we want so in order to get these rates back up let's modify our reactor and we will do that by replacing one of the moderators with reflectors and make sure that this is the side one not the middle one as soon as you do that the temperature and the depletion rate will go up not only for the highly enriched plutonium but also for the medium or the MEP rod and this will also reflect in the power production there we go we are now producing 7 million HE per second but we can do even better than that replace the second moderator or sorry the second absorber with reflector and now the depletion rate will start going up again basically we will hit the temperatures that we used to get 2200 degrees celsius or above so yeah and now you can let this reactor run until the highly enriched plutonium rod hits 50 percent depletion and once it hits 50 percent you can also replace the third absorber with a reflector and that is how you can deplete your hep rod in the best manner possible or in the most compact way possible i guess now be warned that do not replace this absorber right now as it is in the line of the HEP rod if you replace it right now your reactor will simply explode and I'm pretty sure you don't want that so make sure that you replace this last absorber when the rod has hit 50% depletion or above so that was all I had for this video I hope you guys liked it if you did do smash that like button and also subscribe to the channel peace out guys